Hi, this is Kara Tierney from Monroe Community College, and we're continuing our talk about ideal gas laws and some variations of that gas law. So uh, we've looked at incorporating when you change uh, variables. We're going to stick with the original ideal gas law in this video, which is PV equals NRT. But now we're going to incorporate some other things that we've used, such as molar mass. I use the abbreviation capital M, capital M as molar mass. And let's review what molar mass is. Molar mass is equal to, well our units were grams per mole, so grams are mass, little m, divided by mole, which is n. So if we want to incorporate this into our ideal gas equation, I simply solve for n, and when you get that, you get that n is equal to mass divided by molar mass, and uh, you can do the math to get that, and then I just plug that into my equation. And when I rearrange to get rid of all my fractions, I end up with this equation. Now you can go through and do all that math. I'm not necessarily concerned that you can do that, but I want to show you where this equation comes from, and that's why I did all of that. So uh, our new version of the ideal gas equation is pressure times volume times your molar mass is equal to your mass times your gas constant and your temperature in Kelvin, of course. Another version we can do, which takes this version a little bit further, is if we incorporate density. Now density of a gas, remember this is only for gases, is usually given in a little bit different units than we use for liquid. For liquid we often use grams per milliliter. Because uh, the density of gases is much less than that of liquids, we usually use grams per liter. Now density, if you recall, is mass divided by our volume. And so what we can do is if we take our ideal gas equation in this form and we solve it for density, which is mass over volume. Notice you have mass and volume here, so I'm just going to get them on the same side. So when we rearrange that all, we substitute D in for M over V, you get this equation. The pressure times the molar mass equals your density times your gas constant and your temperature, or as I like to call it, PIM dirt. So let's practice this using problem example six. We have a 3.00 liter vessel containing 2.50 grams of a gaseous hydrocarbon at 527 degrees Celsius. Yikes, that's hot. And 2.1 atmospheres. Assuming ideal gas behavior, what is the molar mass of the hydrocarbon? So the first thing you need to decide is, okay, I've got all these equations, what do I use? And we notice that we have our volume, our mass, right? Our volume is 3.00 liters. Our mass is 2.50 grams. My temperature is 527 degrees Celsius and my pressure is 2.1 atmospheres. So let's look back and see which of our equations would be most appropriate. PV equals NRT. Well, if we're trying to find the molar mass, probably not that one because we want to find one that has molar mass in it. So it's probably going to be one of the two equations we learned in this video. We don't mention anything about density, so we're probably not going to use the second equation. So right, we're going to be using the first one that we learned today. So if we go back, PVMM equals MRT. That is what we are going to be using in this problem. So what I would like you to do right now is pause the video and uh, see if you can solve for molar mass. You should probably should be able to do that at this point. And then come back and we'll see what I got. Okay, so uh, we are going to solve for molar mass. And uh, to do that, I need to divide both sides by my PV. Cross those out. So our molar mass is equal to our mass times RT over PV. So my mass is given in 2.50 grams. You know our R is always going to be the same thing. 0 0.0821 meters atmosphere over mole Kelvin. Temperature. Hey, what do I have to do? That's right, convert to Kelvin. So let's do that up here. 
We're going to add 273.15. However, 527 degrees Celsius only goes to the ones, so we need to round our answer to the ones. And that gives me 800K. Now I'm going to draw a period at the end so we know that it has three significant figures. And on the bottom, we're going to multiply 2.1 atmosphere and also my 3.00 liters. And we need three significant figures. If you put that correctly into your calculator, you should get 26.1 grams per mole. All right? Let's recheck those units. Uh, let's see, what cancels out? Atmospheres, liters, Kelvin. So that leaves us with grams per mole. So our next problem is going to be the your turn. In part A, you're supposed to determine the density of ammonia gas at 850 millimeter mercury and 100 degrees Celsius. Now notice that no variables are changing, so you're probably going to use one of the versions of the ideal gas equation that we've gone over. Hint, hint, you're asked to determine density, so probably the one that includes density. And the other two are kind of thinking problems. So suppose a sample of carbon dioxide gas is at the same pressure and temperature as the gas in part A. How does the density of the two samples compare? This is a conceptual problem, and we're going to discuss the answer to that as well as the other ones. Part C asks if each sample mentioned in Part B is in a 1.00 liter container, how do the number of molecules of each gas compare? Explain your reasoning. So try and answer those three, and we'll discuss those in class.